All right, so I'm going to start off uh, with a little bit of an anecdote. Um, I was watching this uh, famous Netflix show. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. Um, and I was watching this character specifically, and she was saying something awful as she normally does. And I was sitting there and I'm like, no, don't do that. No, don't do that. And I found myself apologizing for her to the other characters. And I'm like, no, don't, don't. You make us look bad. And I'm like, wait a second. I, I'm not white. <laughs> so my talk today is creating characters based on ethnic dysphoria. And that's sort of a confusing title, but I'll get into it. So, just to clarify, dysphoria is a noun, and it is a um, state of unease or generalized dissatisfaction with life, because I know it's generally associated um, uh, with uh, gender, but it does actually apply here, uh, to be very clear. Why is it doing that? Okay. So who am I? Um, I'm Leisha Marie Riddell. Uh, that's a drawing I did on my face. I wore the hat, so you knew. Um, my birth name was Marie Therese. Can I make this bigger? I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so my name is Alicia, this is my face. My birth name is Marie Teresita de la Vega. Um, I was born in the Quezon City. It's uh, a region in the, uh, Manila in the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Um, my, fam my adopted family is half Scottish, half French, and um, I'm currently a lead artist and art director in a small studio. Uh, I don't actually have the title art director. Um, commonplace. Um, and I specialize, I'm specialized in character design and uh, general art direction. So I, I also have all sorts of ADHD, which is why I'm kind of like a barrel of monkeys up here. Uh, anyway, so I was adopted. Uh, my family is white. And so my mom and, mom and dad always wanted a little girl um, and unfortunately, two boys and uh, a failed pregnancy led to me. Adoption has led to a very fulfilling life so far. Um, I always knew I was adopted. As soon as I had some sort of comprehension, they're like, hi, sweetie, you didn't come from me. And I'm like, okay, thanks, I, I don't get it, I'm two. <laughs> so I knew that the title adopted came with me, but I didn't understand quite what that meant. But childhood with my family was... Uh, pretty funny. My mom was often asked, is that your kid? Did you steal her? And she was actually stopped at the border several times because they thought that she stole me. Um, and she was actually accosted in the mall because she's like, that's not your child. And she's like, technically no, but legally yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we still joke that we look alike because she doesn't. <laughs> and it was a nuclear family and I'm not saying that that's better. Gosh, if you know me, you know that I don't necessarily agree with that. But growing up, it was mostly stable, and I enjoyed that. Um, mom, dad, two brothers. And I got everything that I needed, as well as what it, a lot of what I wanted, because I was spoiled rotten. Um, and I was afforded a lot of opportunities that I may, well, definitely would not have gotten if I wasn't adopted. Um, and if I were going to get real, I would have been dead if I wasn't. So I got to explore the young artist in me. Uh, this is a character that I created. This is my original character. Uh, her name is Lisa Andrea Williams. Uh, I made her when I was four years old. Uh, I was in a, an art camp and I decided I'm gonna draw my own character. I'm gonna, none of this silly cartoons. I'm gonna make my own. And that's a spectacular image of her. If uh, you wanna talk later, I have it with me that you can, we can giggle at it. And in the mid 90s, I decided she should also be a Pokemon trainer. Um, but it was very interesting for me because uh, she was uh, ambiguous, I mean, I guess, just like me. And in interpreting what I saw, uh, I was, sorry, I'm fast forwarding now. Um, in my first year of college, I was called up for drawing myself with white skin. And that was really the first time that I thought, ooh, that's, this isn't, I don't do that, but I don't actually have the drawing, but like, this is uh, the drawing that I posted earlier. Um, and this is sort of what I did. It was a lot lighter. Uh, and people were like, that doesn't look like you though. And I'm like, but it's what I'm used to. So I just associated my parents with me. And then I thought, I started thinking, all right, what am I then? And I'm an artist comprised of references. And growing up in the mid 90s, there was uh, a lot of anime. <laughs> and if we're talking specifically, there was a lot of dubbed anime. So early dubs of anime often change character names. Um, 
and then especially, or had non-Asian names to begin with, and that added to my confusion as a growing artist, growing up in a white family, as an Asian person. So, I mean, specifically, we are talking about Sailor Moon, if you remember um, <laughs> the wonderful names that they changed, uh, especially Sailor Jupiter too, Lita, that's a Japanese name, if I've ever heard one. Um, but as I grew older, I started to get into Final Fantasy. I've only played two of them, I'm sorry. Um, but Final Fantasy X was specifically my first foray into issues regarding race during my formative years. Um, I played Final Fantasy VII and X and no others, like I said. I'm sorry, I'm sure the other ones are great. Um, and I found Final Fantasy X specifically very interesting because they marginalized Aryan qualities in the Albed race. And <laughs> this is just a funny side note. As someone who come, with a family who comes from the northeast of Scotland, Albed actually translates to Old Bed. Um, uh, yeah, so it was them versus the rest of the world, and it was an interesting way to introduce at least a vague amount of race issues into a video game. And so Summer Yuna was the first character that was like, oh wow, that's kind of interesting, because she was like the first character that I kind of identified with. She was ambiguous, but she was definitely Asian looking other than the brown hair and blue eyes, but like her facial features. Um, and I, I also viewed her as a protagonist because I didn't care about Titus, let's be honest. Um, and she did become the protagonist in that sequel that half the people like, half people don't like. But especially when this shot came up of her in the game, I was like, wow, that kind of makes me feel better about myself. Um, we also have the same hair style right now, that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, like just the facial features were a big change from uh, older games, at least the games that I saw. So I got to experience for the first time, like, oh, being Asian probably isn't a bad thing. Um, and I do, I am working on original stories. Uh, Lisa's still in it, don't worry. Uh, but for all of my original characters, I wrote profiles describing their origins, and don't worry, it's on that piece of paper that I have with me. <laughs> you can laugh at it with me, I, I encourage it. Uh, but no matter their birthplace or race or physical description, they always ended up being Caucasian, white. Um, and the example names, like Michelle Ramirez, somehow she ended up being white. Because <laughs> that's just what I knew, and it was very confusing. And um, the white skin, blue, blue eyes, blonde, and it was very strange. Um, and it was just a sign of just how confused I was. Uh, this is not funny, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, that's exactly what started to happen. As I grew older, I started to realize there was a disconnect between me and my family. Uh, and when you don't have to question something, and it doesn't occur to you as a problem, you have privilege. Um, and if anything ever troubled me as a kid, um, I'll go to my mom, as you do, and I would tell her, mom, this is really upsetting me. I didn't get into the high school that I wanted. I didn't get into the college that I wanted to, and I really need your help right now. And then she would go in, and she would cause a fuss, and she would solve the problem just by being an angry, middle-aged white woman. <laughs> the Scottish accent probably helped, because that is a scary accent. <laughs> and, and I had that... Um, privilege by proxy. If I would just stand near her and there was a problem in the store, if there was a problem at school, she would just come in and she would lay, bring the Scottish thunder and that was it. Like, she would solve the problem. Um, and as I grew into a young adult, I realized that I was getting bullied for being um, like queer, uh, of color, being adopted. It's like, your real mom didn't love you. I'm like, no, my real mom was broke. Like, <laughs> like that's just how it was. And um, this was probably the first big issue in my life, um, The Sound of Music. We had a performance on at my high school, uh, and I decided to audition for the role of Liesl. And I didn't get the part. I got to the final round of auditions, and uh, there, there's Liesl, just in case, uh, well, the actress who played her in the movie. And I didn't get it because you don't look like a Von Trapp. So that felt really good. Um, but yeah, as I got older, I started to change Lisa specifically because um, she was very important to me, and I still have her. I first changed her hair into dark brown, but she remained English because she was like this English-Italian hybrid. She wasn't Italian at all. I just thought Italian was cool. Um, and then I decided she would be Indian because the story takes place in Canada, and there's a, 
there's a very large Indian population. Bless you. Uh, her name is still Lisa because um, being the terrible school system that we have, we do actually take a lot of non-anglicized names and make them anglicized for school. So I thought, and also it was sentimental to keep her name, but there she is. Um, and a new protagonist for my story. There she is. Originally Lisa was the protagonist, but I ended up changing it to be Alex Wolf um, because Lisa ended up teaching me about learning to accept myself, learning to be a person of color and just accept that. Um, and Alex is a great blank slate. And uh, I joke about it, um, but she, <laughs> she is an ignorant white woman. So like, she is taught by the people of color in my stories as well. Um, but conscious designing is what we're really here to talk about in my talk. Uh, creating characters of very gender, body type, and race is super important. Um, and you have to be prepared that someone will always be offended uh, at something you create and you should be ready to apologize. Like, okay, well maybe what I made wasn't a great thing. Um, if you have any suggestions, uh, tell me. Um, but you also should be proud uh, of your work. <clears throat> and not that it ever hap will happen, but don't villainize white characters either. Um, have your good characters who happen to be good be willing to learn and grow or, or not. It's still good character creation and good writing. Um, and make your characters of color just as badass, if not more. And I mean, this is a weird exception, and I, uh, and I, and I bring it up because it was a, a big talk amongst us animators. Um, but there is uh, like Honey Lemon from Big Hero 6 in that new Disney movie. Um, she has blonde hair and blue eyed, but um, I read somewhere that there was a testimonial, I believe it was Tumblr. Um, it was great to see a Latino with blonde hair and blue eyes because people forget we exist. Um, so, but I still think it was a cop-out. I think they should have just accepted it. But anyway, thank you for listening and design consciously. Um, do I come for questions?